That's great. Our families come in. That's brilliant. Thank you, Lord, for your great power, your immeasurable power. How high, how wide, how deep is the love of God through Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Lord, we just thank you that you're with us this, this morning. And we want to worship you this morning in spirit and in truth. To give you everything, Lord, and to praise your mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's have the worship now. Good morning, everyone. Are you joyful? Oh, some of you are. Are you joyful? Yes. Yes, you understand? I ready to be in battle with you tonight. Yeah, yeah, a few. Okay, this is a battle, but we're all in battles, so um, let's let's win the victory.
here a march in the presence of God in a big way in this country. Hallelujah. So you may be hearing me thinking, like, we're all praising. Yes, we are praising. In God. Uh, in God. Um, but there's, there's, there's a reason for that. You know, I've got to go to the lyrics. And, uh, and uh, when they go into battle, when they go into battle, because, you know, when you go into battle, there's fear, isn't there? I'm sure there is fear because you fear for about what might happen. And so the king does a round and speech, doesn't he? I remember it from the Lord of the Rings and does that. And just takes the sword and stuff. And then when they're charging, in battle, they roar, don't they? They kind of like let out a big shout, and it does something about it. Kind of, it dispels fear, and it kind of it declares, you know, you know, it's like almost like forgotten of glory, kind of thing. And so the thing for me with this, the shout, not that I was shouting because I'm trying to protect my voice from the last couple of weeks. But what it does is like it might be in the midst of um, fear, it might be in the midst of difficult situations, that actually all you can do is roar. In fact, actually, the Bible has a verse about that, doesn't it? It's like we, we let out groans um, because we don't know what to pray. And it's, it's because all these things kind of going on, and we can let out these groans, these cries, we're like, what are we doing there? And to, and it's something like from deep from here. I don't, I, I don't, know, I, I don't know how to explain it apart from that, like from, from here. But like, I know when I know when my sister was diagnosed with cancer and it was terminal and I said, you know, and it was like, I, I couldn't, all I could do was roar, all I could do was that, that's all I could do, it was because I thought, because it looked like, well it, it, it did end in defeat in one second because she died from the cancer, but she came to faith, she, you know, she, she didn't know Jesus and she, then she did, because we, we led her to, uh, to that relationship with Jesus, and you know, so, if you're going through those kind of things, then let out that shout, let out that roar, because it, this is something, it's, and it's something about calling upon the name of the Lord. And just whilst we're here, and just while well, Karen was kind of going on that, there's a couple of situations where we really need to pray for a few, there's some people. Emily's not here today, she's, she's, she's never ill, and um, she was in hospital yesterday, she had a blood infusion, so we're going to pray for Emily. Um, some of you might know uh, Chris and Karen, um, and so with without without miracle, she's 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 not long for this world. So we need to pray, and so I wanted to do that. And there's others who there's other situations I'm probably aware of, and, or maybe not aware of, and some I'm aware of that we just need to pray. Is anyone who ne- is in need today who needs to pray? Okay, so we just. Why don't you just go around? Keep your hands up. Just, just come, come around you. I see some ladies can come around. Some of these, these guys here. Some of them less than that. Some blokes. That would be good. Did Julie at the back there. Um, someone come. Hey, Luke, you come and pray. Yeah, that's Irene. Thank you. That's great. Right. Yeah. Because we have a God who's not insensitive. We have a God who's not happy. He's powerful. So Lord, just bring all the situations to you, Lord. Those that we know, those that we don't know, Lord. And Lord, we ask that you just come, Lord, right now. You just come, Holy Spirit. You just come, Holy Spirit. You just come, Holy Spirit. Lord, you know the situation. You know that we need miracles. We just call upon you and we are going to make it. Lord, nothing is too difficult for you. So, Holy Spirit, we call on the name of Jesus. Because this is what you, you died. You died for these things. So, Lord, we just call on the name of Jesus. For Karen. Authority. All authority has been given to us. The 
this and Lord, we speak in the name of Jesus. We speak in the authority that you've given us. Cancer be gone. The brush of the girl with Jesus. Okay. 
Yeah, thank you. Can I then just mention about the ladies' brunch, uh, and then the children will go through and then we'll make it So, ladies, at last, there's going to be a Valentine's ladies' brunch with a little god in your heart, and you're going to bring some lovely little goodies, and, and I'd love you to come and see me afterwards. So, it's on the 17th, so it's after Valentine's Day, and uh, come see Shirley as well. It's on the 17th, and it's a Saturday, and it is 9.30 and nine o'clock to set up. So Susan's going to do some beautiful table decorations and we're going to have a really brilliant time. So nine o'clock, so 9.30 to start till 12.30, okay? So it'd be great to see you all. Uh, hands up for a rough idea who would like to come. Oh, yeah, yeah? Well, that's great. So there's quite a lot of you, so that's brilliant. Karen will come calling you. Because you'll have, by the time you get to have a cup of coffee, you'll have forgotten. But if you're anything like me, uh, so that'd be good. Right, children, we're going to get through to the kids' church. And then we'll talk about some of the kids. What are you doing, Tom? Nice to see you all. Right. Okay. Um, but yes. Sorry. Oh, sorry, what was that? Sorry. Sorry. Look, if you want to put it up, please. Did you know the big one name for wholeness? Whole is a valueless word with a question of holistic approach. Our goal is to encourage and empower women to make good choices that will have a transformative impact in their whole being. It's a 10 weeks program here at New Life Church from 10 to 12 every other Thursday and we are starting on the 15th of February. To request a brochure with detailed information or to secure your place in this group, please email Hope dot you at gmail.com. Hope you made for this. So you can ask more information to me or Ashley or Pam, but if you email us, then we can send you a digital brochure with more detailed information. You can also Tell us whether you would like to register or not. Uh, if you are not, if you, if you don't like computers, basically, come and talk to us and we go for sort that with you. And we are looking forward to journeying this together. Okay? Do you want to put the other, um, thank you. <coughs> Sorry, I've got my voice. Um, we have to film that every last Friday. So this, this month it's going to be uh, Narnia. Um, next month we're going to have the, it's going to be an 18, it's going to be, yeah, because it's on um, Good Friday, and it's going to be the um, for Passion of Christ. So uh, bring your tissues for that one. But uh, you're very welcome to go to Narnia, and everyone's very welcome. And it's free popcorn and free drinks, and it was really good last time, so uh, please come along. Oh, oh the oh, yeah, oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> we will be changing that. Uh, the other thing is, bring a friend. There is a very strong um, intention of reaching the community. Um, it is like a stealth outreach, but it is, you know, first we want people to come in through the door, feel welcome, feel, um, you know, that. We have a space for them, that they are welcome here. And so bring friends. Bring somebody that has never come to church or would never come in any other circumstances. They will come from the free, the free platform and the big screen. So we please cooperate and help us with that because we, we are doing this together as a family. It's not just a couple of people that are doing it. We're all doing it together. Great Father, just thank you for our children. Just pray best as they go through to Kids Church. They'll have a great time. And those who are leading them, Lord, we just thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, guys, have fun. You can go. Go, 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 go.
I don't know if we do have any music, but we're going to just take our offering as well, so we're just going to sit uh, Do we have some? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That's... So please don't feel you have to give, but if you'd like to, that would be great. I know um, people do give by standing order as well, so um, <clears throat> if you give, if you're a taxpayer and you'd like to give as well, um, the government gives us uh, 25% for every pound. So every £10, we get £2.50 back from the government. So last year at the church we got 12,000 quid from the government. So <clears throat> I like getting money from the government. Money for nothing. So, uh, so but it helps us to do... Ooh. Helps us to do, helps us to do everything that we want to do. And uh, just thank you for that. Thank you for giving. Thank you for generous. Giving all is part of worship, in case you're wondering. Uh, and we are going to be preaching it sometime more, so... Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> so, it's something we should talk about on occasions. It's uh, which good, so... Brilliant. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. That's good. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> I'm going to be speaking in a few moments, but um, uh, we, <clears throat> we had a weekend away. Well, actually, it was a, probably more like about... It was two days we had away um, as a leadership team. Um, just come back to this day of the evening. So we've planned lots of things in the diary, you'll be pleased to know. We've done some good things like that. Um, so um, it was fantastic. Um, but one of the things we wanted to talk about is a bit about life groups. Um, because, um, well, Max will tell us about life groups anyway. So uh, it's been a little bit of what goes on and all about them. So thank you, Matt. Awesome. Mm. One of our, our main strategies for, for church growth is through the life groups. And um, we have different sorts of life groups. We've got our, our main life groups, we've got a church plant at Felton, we've got um, Shirley runs in, um, as an Arab chaplain, runs a group for the, um, oh, I hesitate to say older folks, older than me, just about, <laughs> only just, um, in, in the daytime. So, um, so we have several different types of, of groups, but our main thrust of the life groups is is to have um, church growth through. Um, could you move the slide up, please, uh, Luke? Thanks. Um, so, to have church growth that is is coming from um, a healthy growth in the life groups, because it's not church. It's not just about what happens on a Sunday. Church is is the community that happens through the week. And, and the growth that happens in us spiritually, if we're relying on Sundays for our spiritual growth, then we'll be growing very slowly. Um, but if we are if we are spiritually growing throughout the week um, and throughout our whole life, and, and that happens in lots of ways, and life group is just one of them. Um, and, and our strategy for developing leaders is through the life groups as well. Um, that doesn't mean if you go to a life group, we're going to we're going to make you uh, we're going to give you Mike's job. Um, <laughs> But uh, it does mean that that's our strategy for growing and building leaders because we have a very clear structure in the life which to help us do that on purpose. Um, so if you can um, move it on. With, um, and the, the structure that we've built is, is not just a good idea, but it's, it's based and firmly rooted in the Word. And um, I'm not going to read all the, all the Bible verses, but it, it basically is, is rooted in the idea of a priesthood of every believer. And the priesthood of every believer was something that, that uh, Luther, back in 500 years ago, was a little bit critical of the Catholic Church on a number of points. Uh, but one of them was, he said, there should be a priesthood of every believer. That we should all be, and, and as the Bible says in, in one of Peter's letters, that we're a priesthood. Uh, not just Mike and Karen, but all of us are a priesthood before God and a holy nation. And... Um, and uh, so house churches also have a, a, like a, a history through the church. That's where church started. It wasn't, church didn't start in big buildings because they got kicked out of the synagogues most of the time. And so they had to meet in, in people's houses. And then, um, and so that, that's still, in this day and age, not, uh, church happens not just in church buildings but in people's houses. And the, some of the most successful church growth over, over the centuries has happened through house churches. And then the house church 
you know, each, each little mini house church comes together in a congregation like this one to worship, to celebrate. But the growth and the, um, the, the, the spiritual growth personally and corporately is driven in, the, in those house churches and has been for, for many, many years. And of course, as a church, we are fully behind mission. That we have a mission to go out into the world and bring the good news of Jesus. And, and it's a way for us to do that more effectively as well for the, for the life groups. Um, Luke, you can you move it on? Um, our core values for the life groups is, is that priesthood of every believer. And, um, but we also are doing that within a culture, um, a culture of love and a culture of honour, looking after each other, um, building connection with each other. And, and that connection is not just a, an inward looking, looking after each other, which does happen, and it deliberately happens, but it's an outward looking connection where we actually come together because we've got a mission together as a small group. We, we actually are, are missionally focused. And, um, and that provides a place where we can, um, where we can be developed. Because in a church context, you know, churches run on, on volunteer teams, and they, you know, whether it's people on the door or serving a coffee or, um, you know, on the stage, churches run by volunteers. But sometimes those, those teams, it's about serving, and there is a limited amount of development that happens just because of the nature of the stuff we're doing. Um, if I go and serve tea and coffee, which I do on occasion, Am I being developed in that? Well, somewhat, because I'm developing my, my service, my heart of service. But am I developing leadership skills? Not so much so. Some, a little bit. But actually, the life groups will develop us in a, in a, in a, in a quicker and more concentrated way. Um, and eventually, they need to multiply, which is an uncomfortable thing for any home group. It's so uncomfortable to move by that as our destination. Let's move it on. Um, we have very clear roles within the life groups. It's not just here's a life group with a leader and maybe an assisted leader. There are, we, we are doing it with fivefold ministry. We've got a host who is looking after people, keeps that on the agenda, making sure that people are cared for, looked after. We've got a harvest worker, making sure that every single week, Outward focus on mission is on the agenda every week, not once in a while, but all the time. We've got somebody leading the group, making sure that all the different aspects are tied together and they will happen. And if you can move it on one. And we've got somebody looking after the worship and the prophetic. Not just worship as in on the stage, but actually, you know, making sure that we come together with something about worship in that thing and a growth mm -hmm. thing. Now, growth coaches taking the, not just doing the Bible study, which is important, but actually making sure that Bible study studies us. Are we studying the Word, or are we allowing the Word into us to change us? And that's the, that's the key, isn't it? It's not about knowing more, it's about being changed more. And, and when we talk about growth coaching, we're not just talking about learning information. We're actually saying, how can that, the truth of the Bible and God's Word, change me and transform me? So, so those people, those five different roles, also are looking to train up another person. So within a group, there can be up to ten people at any one time in some form of leadership and growing in that leadership. So that's why it's a destiny incubator that we can move more quickly towards the, the plans that God has for us and, the, and the, the outcomes that he's got for us. So we're building a structure of outreach and discipleship. So it's not just a group where we go and, and, and make friends, which we will, but it's not just that. It's not just a group where we go and do Bible study. We will, but it's not just that. Um, it's not just a group where we're looking at mission, but it is that. We will be looking at mission every week. But it's much more than that. It's all the aspects of church life 
in a micro-church environment. So how do we build those? Well, it's, it's making sure that we you know there's no observers. There's no sitting back passengers. Um, you know, because sometimes we can, we can come to church and we can sit in the, in, in, on a seat in some churches in the pew and, and just take part, but not really be fully a part of what's going on. And it doesn't really transform us and change us. But also we can be much more active and um, the change that happens and this will happen more quickly. And so you will get personal development and growth in life groups. And you will help the, the family of church to grow and to multiply. But also, um, within those groups, there will be support. You'll be able to ask questions, you'll be able to, to try things out. Not always do it perfectly. It's okay. The pressures on when you try to do something on a Sunday morning, the kind of the stakes are higher, aren't they? You know, if you stand up to do something, the stakes are higher. You can practice things in a life group setting that you can't practice as easily on a Sunday morning. And um, and you'll be going on together with other people. And we have, we have the culture in life groups of feedback. And that feedback's okay. It's all right to say, oh, you could have done that a bit better by doing this. Or, oh, well done, that was awesome. Uh, could you do it, could you do something like that here in this context? So, and it'll be a constant practice in culture. So, it's good to know what you're going into when you join something. And that's why we clearly set this out. Is there any more? Um, so, so you are invited to join the life group. Um, our leadership team at church are across the top there. You've got Andy and Karen and Mike looking, looking wonderful. And then I oversee the, the life group structure. Um, and then Anna and Paul are our two life group leaders at the moment. And then Shirley runs the and uh, leads the Anna group. I haven't put the the church plant at Felton up there um, at the moment, because we didn't have pictures, but also that's something we'll be, we'll be looking at to see how do we go forward with that as well. Um, if you'd like to join a life group, you might be joining one of those groups, you might be joining another one. So, but if you'd like to join one, and I strongly encourage you to, because it's going to make a real big difference in you and in the church. Um, but if you're not in a life group and you want to be, then come and speak to me, come and speak to Michael Cameron, and we will make sure that you are placed in, in the right group for you. Okay? And, uh, yeah, bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> you know, one of the things that um, I hear people say about, uh, about, about Christians, say, Jesus, I like. When I look at Christians, I think you're like, mm, I'm not really that keen about being a Christian. And so that, because sometimes we say, we're good at telling people what to do, but we're not very good at doing it ourselves. So it's good that, the whole point is that we grow, become mature spiritually. We don't just, uh, in fact, James puts it like this, that we don't, we don't just like to, as babies, and we're tossed and turned by, um, by every wind that blows, uh, that we become mature. And so that's so important. That we do that, so so we really we really want to, you to grow. We want we want you to succeed. We want you to succeed, and uh, our role as leaders um, is that um, well, our role is to equip the saints. That's what that's what the Bible charges us to do. So we are trying to do that. So thank you, Matt, <coughs> for doing that. So in the next few weeks, you're going to see some dates whizzing out at you. We've worked out when a carol service is, we've worked out when a Christmas party is, we've worked out all those things, we've worked out where's John Melvin, where are you John Melvin when, I went? when we're here, we've worked out all the, pl- the prayer and things that we're going to be doing, uh, not just excluding, they're not exclusive, but we've done a lot of things, we're going to be having weeks of prayer and nights of prayer and stuff like that in the coming over the year, so we've done a, <clears throat> we've had a lot of planning which has been good and we're sort of trying to sort things out and um, 
as well as get to know one another as leaders. So thank you for that, those guys who came and helped us with that. And uh, that was really good. One of the things that Karen's going to be doing <coughs> is she's going to be doing like a, a study for those, perhaps if you're find out fairly in the day and want to have some time and want to grow. It's, it's called Think Like a King. And so ladies might say, well, that's not actually to do with me. Um, but actually, you know, um, we are all, um, we're all, we're royalty. You know, so ladies, you are sons of God. And men, we are the bride of Christ. So you just put, you know, that, so, so think like a king. So that's, and this is a study, there's some studies in this that will be. Oh dear. Don't worry. So there's some things Karen's going to be doing this in the day. If you're interested in this, um, there's some interactive stuff in it. I think there's some. Where is it? I think there's some like QR codes. So there's some videos and things connected with it. So it's a. <clears throat> and this is through, it's through a guy called Neil King, who's one of the senior pastors at Planet Shakers in Australia, which is one of the big churches and it's one of the ones that the some of the guys from our, our supervisors in A and they kind of they really relate to them and have and um, so think like a king so Karen's gonna do this and you know sometimes I think we we actually don't appreciate who we are in God. We kinda of think, oh I'm nobody, I'm rubbish on that. You you if you're a born if you're born again, you're a son and daughter of the most high God. Yes, that means you're royalty. Uh, but often we don't think like that. Because the world says, this is how you think. Or our upbringing, or, you know. But this will help us in that. And so we want to provide opportunities to grow in that. So Karen can do that, which would be good. Okay. Um. Oh, my goodness. Look at And as promised, for those who got baptised recently... Um, all the things I've ordered have come through eventually. So, and I've got some certificates. So I'd like to present them. Serena, uh, here. Oh, hang on. That's, that's, not your, that's your certificate for baptism. And your environment. <laughs> Nathan, I have one for you. Um, you were saying about a Bible like a large, large print one. There we go, so we've got a large print Bible. <laughs> Newly, I got I got a Spanish Bible for you. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope that's uh, I hope that's good. Um, um, this key pass that to your mum for me. There we go. That's what I'm saying. There we go. That's good. Hayley, 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 Hayley. There we go. There we go. So that means I want to be like him, I want to, I want to be like, more like Jesus. 
when I'm more like Jesus, I'm a better husband, I'm a better dad, I'm a better granddad. In fact, I'm a better leader, I'm a better Christian, I'm a better person all around. So, and that's our desire is. Our desire is that you grow, you be the best that you can be in God. Not because through your own ability, but through the Holy Spirit changing you and transforming you. And that's really our focus this year is so that you grow, so that you grow and develop. So that you can use, you know, you know, you can see people saved, you can see people healed, you can pray for the sick. Because you can do it. You can do it, because that's what the Bible says, the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead lives in you. So, you know, whether it's talking to your hostages on the plane, Mark says about how he has 200, when he's, on, when he's, he's a captain on the plane, flying a plane, he's got 234 captives uh, who have to listen to, to him speaking and saying, telling them, well, when they're flying over the Mediterranean, saying, this, this is what Jesus did, this, and this, and all that's happened here. Uh, or whether it's just meeting someone for coffee, or whether it's just, you know, praying with the children, whatever it is, whatever it is, but to be the best you can be, to, um, to share Jesus, to help others to grow, and you to grow. So, um, <coughs> I'm kind of getting there. I'm still a bit croaky, so I'm going to take a little water. I'm not going to be long today. Uh, because I knew we were doing all this. Um, Romans chapter 5, <coughs> verses 1 and 2. Say this. I don't know if you can find that, Luke. Romans chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, since we've been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand, and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. I'll read that again. Therefore, since we've been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. And because of our faith, Christ has brought us into a place of undeserved privilege. Isn't that good? Undeserved privilege, where we now stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. The NIV puts it this way. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace, and which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. We rejoice in that. So very simply, therefore, we both say therefore, there's a reason. Therefore, what because of what's come before that? You know, because of what he was talking about, the faith of Abraham. He talked about the faith of Abraham. Because of Abraham's faith, he was counted him as righteous. That was all the thing that was the context. When you read the word of God, um, I think you call it hermeneutics. Matt, is that right? Is that, right? Is that where you're looking at the context? You're looking at the original. Is that right? Hermeneutics. But hermeneutics is where you think about the um, the the author who wrote it. What, what's he written? The person who wrote it. Uh, what was his original intent? What was the what was the time, the culture? What was going on with the people, the place, the time? And how is that then applicable applicable to us? So is that correct, Buffy? First bit to Jesus. The time, and place. Time, and place. The hermeneutics, there we go. Exegesis and hermeneutics. There we go, you learned some words today. So there we go, I've learned one as well. So there we go. So, so when you're reading the Bible, always think about the context. Don't just pluck a verse out. That's where we, when we just pluck a verse out, out of context, that's where we get into trouble. So, <clears throat> therefore, because of all that other stuff, the faith of Abraham, which we read about there before, it was recorded for us, but our benefit too, assuring that God will count us righteous if we believe in him, the one who raised Jesus Christ from the dead. He was handed over to God because of our sins, and he was raised to life to make us right with God. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight, you have been made right in God's sight. Isn't that good? It's not through your own acts. It's not through your own works. Because the Bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags. It is true. We've been made right by faith. 
through Christ Jesus. Because I mean, by, by faith, it is by faith, it is by faith. I can't go back in the time machine and see Jesus died, and I can't go back in the time machine to be with Jesus and the disciples in the upper room. I'd like to, that would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? I can't do that, but it's by faith because I've read it, I have a conviction of the Holy Spirit, and I believe it. It is by faith. We believe by faith, not by sight. Many people say, I will believe it when I see it. That's what our society says. I will believe it if I see it. I will believe it if Jesus turned up and showed up right in front of me. Well, he did 2,000 years ago. And it's recorded. Our society is based upon that. There is no deniable fact that Jesus did not exist. No serious historian will tell you Jesus didn't exist because it's there. In, it's there. The more important question was, who was it who he said he was? I believe it was. That's where faith comes in. That's where faith comes in. It is by faith we've been made right in God's sight. Faith. You have been made right in God's sight. You. You have. You have. I don't know what you're like, but I know what I'm like. <laughs> Sometimes I can put on a good show, I can scrub up well, I can put a suit on, a shirt, I can do my hair, I can shave, put some nice perfect, I mean aftershave on, I can put some, you know, I can do that, I can look, I know how to look okay, and get on and do that. But inside, my heart might be stinking. It might be, it might not be good. But, I've been made right not because of my righteousness, but because of his. His righteousness. His righteousness. And his righteousness alone. I have people say that I can't be a good person like you. And they're like, I'm not good. I'm not good because I don't, I'm better than I was, for sure. But I'm not what I should be. My attitude sometimes is not good. I'm not, in, I'm not loving. I don't love, he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. I don't do that all the time. Because I'm human. Because some people irritate me. Not looking at anyone. I irritate myself sometimes. I feel like, how does that work? I get angry myself. Like, why did I do that again? That's why we need the grace of Christ. That's why we need the gospel. We've been made right. We have been, the NIV says we have been justified. Some people say, John McCain would say, I'll be just as if I've never sinned. Justified. Justified. In Ephesians 1, it says this. He, verse 7, it says, He is rich in kindness and grace. He has purchased our freedom with the blood of his Son and forgiven our sin. The blood of Jesus was shed on the cross and it was, we were purchased by this blood of Jesus. But our lives, our, you know, and by the way, we might live in this tent, in this body, but actually we are, we are spirit. Because God is spirit, we've been made in God's image. So we are body, soul and spirits. So we're not like the animals. The animals, you know, when God made the animals, everything, he, he spoke and they all came to being. With man, he made, he shapes us out of the out of the clay, and he breathed, ruach, the breath of God, into us, and the man came alive. That is why we're different to the animals. I don't believe we descended from uh, apes or whatever, or chimpanzees or, or whatever. I do not believe that. And so we are created. We have body, soul, and spirit. God is spirit, and our spirit has been born again. A spirit. That's why when this dies, this body goes into the ground, our spirit lives on and will go and will be in heaven. I don't believe we're sitting on little hands and wings with like, like little fluffy clouds with harps. Mine's going to be plugged into a massive amp. That's what mine's going to go. I don't believe that. I don't believe, I believe, I believe heaven's an amazing place. Um, but we've been made. He is rich in kindness and grace. He purchased our freedom. Another word there is he has redeemed us. He has redeemed us. So if you think, if, I know you're all Christians and you probably don't do the lottery. But if you won, 
if you have a ticket with 10 million quid in it, you've won, your numbers have come up. I don't know how I know that. I just don't know, I just have a word of knowledge about how that got there. Uh, your numbers come up, you take your ticket somewhere to redeem the ticket, because that ticket, it's just a bit of paper, it's just a, a piece of paper with, and it's, you know, with some numbers on it, which means you are rich. You need to go somewhere, you need to redeem it, you need to give it to someone. They validate it, and then they say, yep, you, this is a valid ticket, you can redeem this ticket. Would you like your 10 million quid? No. And they give you the 10 million quid, you redeem it, and they give you something. Or you buy something back. Used to be at the, uh, at the pawn shops, wasn't it? Where people would go and pawn something, get some money, and then they go back and buy, buy back, pay back for their guitar or whatever it is. That you redeem your guitar, you redeem it back, you buy it back. We've been bought back by Christ Jesus, by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah, isn't that good? Well, I'm excited about that, I don't know about anyone else. I'm excited. The blood of Jesus, the powerful, mighty blood of Jesus redeems us, changes us. It's not by our own words, it's not by our own desires, but it's by Him. We're made right in God's sight and we have peace. Now the word there here, because remember, you, you think you're thinking I'd be saying shalom. Well of course it's not shalom here because it might have been the word that was spoken, but the New Testament is not written in Hebrew, shalom is a Hebrew word. The word here, because the New Testament is written in Greek, and I learned a while back, actually the Greek that they speak here isn't the Greek that they modern they speak, but it's, um, but the word is Irene. It's Irene. There we go, Irene, I don't know if you know this piece, but there we go. It's um, Irene. And, and, and what it means, it means it has a very similar meaning to Shalom. And so people think like, oh, peace, it's just peace, you know, like, ah, oh, I just want some peace and quiet for goodness sake. Shut up! You know, I'm going to bring you some little kids like, what? Bring up the bass <laughs> Shalom is not that. It's not necessarily that. It's not the absence of noise. Peace is health, wholeness, prosperity, wellness, completeness, welfare. And the word I read, it has, it's, used, it's used in the same context as Shalom in the Old Testament, in the Hebrew. It's used exactly in the same context. So we have peace, that we have that Shalom. We have completeness, we have prosperity, we have health. That is available to us. Maybe we don't experience it all the time, but that is, that is available to us in Christ Jesus. Sometimes I don't experience God's peace, and I think, why not? Maybe we've got to learn something, but that peace is available to us through what Jesus has done for us. The world where we live in needs peace because there's a real absence, this striving, this turmoil. You look at all the people who go to the food banks because they can't pay their bills or because of this, and because of, oh, you're on strike because they want more money. And blah, 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 blah. There's, there's all this kind of stuff everywhere. The world, to me, it seems to be like it's in a mess. Everyone's striving and kind of like, after, and then there's a real lack of peace. I think this is why people sometimes don't like want like being like Christians because we don't have that peace. The challenge to us is that we should live lives of peace. That we should be the most happiest people. We should be the most peaceful people. We should have that kind of like that. Even though sometimes things are difficult, I don't think we can go around with stupid smile anymore. I saw you and saw you and Not that stupid, you know, but about the reality, but that peace. I think I spoke about when my dad had uh, my mum phoned me, it was a few years ago, my mum phoned me, my dad was in a uh, hospital in London, and she said he's been transferred, she phoned me at midnight and said he's been transferred from one of them to King's, I can't remember where it was, the one where Boris was up when, when he had COVID. St. Thomas's, went from St. Thomas's to King's. He's been blue lighted it because he had a stroke. And, um, and, and, uh, and put the phone down. And I'm thinking, like, I can't go to sleep like that. I can't go to sleep. And I said to Karen, I'm just going down to Kent's. I'm just going down. So I need to be there for my mum. I need to be there for my dad. And I went down and I was driving down and I was feeling like, I'm like, oh, 
this turmoil inside me thinking, oh, what am I going to find? Am I going to find, you know, is he, is he alive? Is he dead? Is he, is he, what's going on? And I was praying in tongues most of the way down. It actually makes the journey go really quick, which is fantastic. And, but then as I started praying in tongues, that, that fear, that anxiety started to go. And suddenly I started to have that peace. That no matter what situation I was going to go and find myself down there, I was going to, I would know how to cope. Good, bad, or somewhere in between. I have that peace. That's what we need. And the world needs that kind of peace. We have peace because of what? Because of what Jesus, our Lord, has done for us. That peace is available to us. And if you're thinking like, oh, I don't know about that peace, I'm not suffering, I'm not like experiencing that peace. Well, pray about it. Ask God. Pray in tongues. Because when you pray in tongues, you're praying in an unknown language, you're praying what the Spirit needs. You're praying the perfect will of God, 100% of the time. So, so because of our faith, oh, oh it's okay, it's okay. So because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege. Wow. We are privileged because Jesus has brought us into this place. Because he says, come up here. Come up higher. Come up higher where you can breathe, where the air is good. Come up higher. Come up higher. And it reminded me about Psalm 23. And in Psalm 23 it says, mm, that's after Nehemiah. Psalm 23, it says this. The Lord is my shepherd, I have all I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me, he leads me beside what? Peaceful streams or peaceful waters. He leads me. God leads me by peaceful waters. That's really cool, isn't it? He renews my strength. Anyone need their strength renewed? Yeah, yeah. If you need your strength renewed, come to Jesus. He guides me along right paths, bringing honour to his name. Even when I walk through the, valley, the darkest valley, the valley of the shadow of death, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. And your rod and staff protect and come for me, and you prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. And you honour me. Ah, God honours us by anointing my head with oil, and my cup overflows with blessings. Surely goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Sounds disgusting having like oil poured on your head, and it sounds a bit sticky and a bit messy, but it's a biblical thing for a blessing, it's a sign of blessing. That's what it is, spiritual significance. It has a spiritual significance of blessings, blessing. God wants to bless us. So, He leads us, He brings us, He calls us, He walks with us. He takes us. He's brought us to a place of undeserved privilege. Because, like that book says here, He's made us royalty. Because He's adopted us in His family. Now, Karen and I, we've met um, Charles, King Charles, not when he was king. Uh, but we met him when he came to Morpeth in 2008 when Morpeth flooded. And we came and met him. And Karen just talked a bit about, <coughs> about what happens. You know, if you wanted to go and see Charles now, you don't just walk down or go down to church to Buckingham Palace, bring the bell, ding dong! Ah! I'm up. Is it okay if I pop in and see Charlie Boy? Oh, sorry, King Charles. Is it okay if I pop in and have a chat with him? Because I want someone to ask you. Ask you can help me. You cannot just do that. You can't just waltz down there and knock on the door. You have to be invited. And you have to put on all your posh clothes. Go to a garden party. Do you know? And I know people go to garden parties. And they didn't even, they just saw the Queen or the King or whatever. They still saw them from afar. They didn't, they didn't get to meet them. We have access. In the NIV it says we have access. Access.
access all areas. So if you, if you go to your gigs and things and you get that pass, access all areas, backstage, you can go and meet the people, you can make, go and see everything and do everything. That's what we have, we've got access to all areas, not just access to all areas, but access to all his resources, all his stuff. And God, yeah, with daddy's stuff, exactly, yes. And he has all the resources of heaven, all the money, everything that we ever need, all the gifts, everything. He has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege. It is undeserved privilege. The worst thing for us as Christians is most of us think, like, I don't deserve it. Of course you don't. None of us do. I mean, and we kind of invalidate ourselves straight away. But actually, it's not because of us. It's because of him, it's because of his grace, it's because he has taken us, he has adopted us into his family, he calls us his son, his child, his daughter, his son. And so we have access to him, we come to him, through Jesus, all through Jesus, by the Holy Spirit. And now where we stand, we stand in the presence of the King. Other people say, that, oh, we'll go there, we'll bow down, yes, we will bow down at times. But also we come and we stand in the presence of the King. We're not like, he's not standing there over with his foot on our neck like his enemies. Or we're kind of bowing down because they're like, oh, merciful master. We're standing in his presence. Because, you know, even Esther, you read about it, Esther, she was the queen and she said like, she, they said like, Morgan said, go and see the King because our people need you. And he said, if if he didn't extend his sector, she was going to get killed. And she said, I will lose him. If I do, if I die, I die. But I will go and see him. We can access the king. We have access. It was the, the whatever, the curtain was torn. It was torn from top to bottom. So we can access. We can meet with God. That's why, for so many years, I kind of fell in the trap, you know, like when you say like, people say like, oh, when you become a Christian, you've got to read the Bible and you've got to pray. Um, I'm not saying you've not got to pray and you've not got to read the Bible, you do. It's vital. But I kind of got into it like as a religious kind of duty. But actually, I've realised now, I want to, because I want to be like Jesus. I want to know about him. I want to be like him. And where do I find out about him? It's in here. Where do I get changed by him? It's by being in his presence. And say, Lord, look, let my, my will be reduced, Lord, but your will be more in me. To experience more of him. And say, so my thinking has changed totally. Rather than doing it from a religious duty, but actually because I love him. And I, want, I need him. And I want to be changed by him. And if I'm to be the person that God's called me to be, I need to be in his presence more and more and more. And we confidently, confidently, not like, oh, oh, oh Lord, I, I, I don't know why I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm, 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 I'm. Confidently to come into his presence. Boldly. We approach his throne. Boldly. Most of us would be like, oh, I, I'm not really meant to be here. I'm only here by mistake, by default. I said a prayer, I'm, not, I'm, I'm here. I'm like, oh. bold if you come into his presence. He wants to see you. He wants to spend time with you. It's his delight. That's why he created you. You're here, created because you have a purpose. He wants you. That's why this is really important. Think like a king. To think how God thinks of us, not how we think of ourselves. So we confidently look forward to sharing God's glory. Hey, that's pretty good. And we can do more than we can think and possibly imagine. Oh, I've got a pretty good imagination. But you can do more than we can think or possibly imagine. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Daddy. I'd like some of that. Anyone else like some of that? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Too right. So we want to experience... His peace we've been made faith, made right by faith. We have peace. I read. With I read because of Jesus, what he has done for us. He's brought us into a place of privilege. 
privilege. Hey, some of you need to lift your heads up. Some of you walk around with your heads down like this. And, oh, you need to lift your heads up. You need to walk with your head held up because that's what Jesus says about you. So come on, lift your head up. Stop looking now at the circumstances. Look, look at me. Come on, look, look up. Look up. Because he leads and resides in peaceful streets. He dies beyond right paths. He's brought us to undeserved privilege. So the answer is Jesus. Always Jesus. Always Him. Power of the Holy Spirit. Experience the power of the Holy Spirit to be changed and made more like Him. And that was really kind of what I wanted to share today. So hopefully for you to be feeling a little bit better about yourself. About how Jesus, what God thinks of you. Not necessarily what you think about yourself. Listen, if you're trying to live to please others, stop it. Live to please Him. Don't live to try and please me or other people. Don't try to be live up to people's expectations. They will let you down. Guarantees. Guarantees. I probably will let you down at some point. Probably. But He will never let us down. <coughs> he will never let us down. So, let's pray. Lord, I just thank you that you've been made right by faith. And thank you, Lord, that faith is to, is growing in each one of us, Lord, today. I ask, Lord, that, that we'd experience that peace, the peace of God, because of what you have done, Jesus. I pray, Lord, as well, that we would know a real revelation of who we are, how you regard us, you think of us. I pray, Lord, that again, I just that we would not beat ourselves up. We would not allow the enemy to come in, tell us that we're useless for this, for that, and the other. But Lord, we would actually fix our eyes on you and what you say. So Lord, we just ask that you do that today. And you'd help us to realise that we stand in your presence. And we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing in your glory. Yes, your glory. So we thank you for that, Lord. We just pray that you just give us an increase in the revelation of what that means and how we can do that. So Lord, I just thank you. I praise you. Pray we have a good week this week. Pray you bless us. Help us to be a blessing and to bless others. And Lord, we just thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Are you on tomorrow?